Hi guys and welcome back on board SV Blown Away. This week's episode is action. Well, it's full of work, as you'd expect. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ian and I have lived on board this old steel catch for over 20 years, traveling, working and playing on the ocean. Welcome to the adventure. Hey guys, welcome back to SV Blown Away. Uh, this week's episode we are concentrating on some more maintenance. I have got the roller furling to fit and I have also got to sort out this floor before it drives me crazy with it squeaking. And also a big warm welcome to Neil and Monica, both who have come along this week to give me a hand with numerous jobs that I am struggling to get done solo. Uh, let's just step back in time slightly. Last week my son was here and he works on lifts, elevators to the Americans. And I asked him to go up and take my force day down. The reason I asked him to do that is that I have purchased a roller furling system and I really want to get that fitted. And if any of you have ever fitted one, you'll know that's a fairly substantial job. So I figured that would make one entire episode. Right up until the point the GoPro ate the memory card. The reason I'm doing the roller phone is I've got people around that can help me at the moment and a dock that I'm side onto. So for me, it's much easier to do it now than trying to do this at anchor. But yeah, let's get started. Oh yes, a timely reminder. Uh, this is not an instructional video. I don't do instructional videos. I am not teaching anyone how to put this force day together. Uh, mistakes were made, uh, myself or Neil. We are neither of us riggers. We neither of us know actually what we're doing. We made most of it up as we went along. Exciting. Roller furling. It's like having a roller blind in your kitchen. You just pull on the chain and it just rolls away. I suppose I'd better read those instructions. Small drum, which is where I built this model. And some string. Now this may just be a cliche, but like most men, I don't generally read the instructions. Because I have a twin anchor setup with both anchors in the rollers ready to deploy at any time, I needed to ensure that the furling system, especially this rope drum, was not gonna take a hit from the anchors when they came back on board. So I had to buy an extension piece from the manufacturers to raise the drum an extra four inches. So before I go any further and start cutting things up, I wanna make sure that this is going to clear the anchors. the old cable laid out on the ground, we can put the new cable next to it to ensure that we have the length exactly correct. Now all of this came as a kit. The Furlex system itself contains a twin luff groove aluminium extrusion. Now all of these pieces slot together and they connect using clips. There are no screws in this. And with two of us working together we managed to slide the plastic inserts and clip the aluminium extrusion together quite quickly. Now in an ideal world, I wouldn't be doing this on an uneven surface. 
So we left the plastic on until the last minute to protect the aluminium. Oh, gone. That's it. It went just, it's gone just past. Literally, that's like a half a centimetre gone too far. Leave, leave it there a yeah, minute. Yeah, that's fine. So if you put that end cap on, and then we'll just push it from the other side. Yeah, I need to get the piece in. Oh, you need the stuff anyway. <laughs> now, while I'm sure you could put this together on your own solo, it is immensely helpful to have a second pair of hands. Thank you very much, Neil. So that now should only go as far as that mark, shouldn't it? It's a well-oiled machine here, mate. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Who needs riggers? That bit's fiddly, isn't it? It is very good. It's quite clever, though, the fact that there's no... There's, There's no screws, screws holding it together, great. which is actually nice because then you don't have the yeah. stainless steel yeah, argument with aluminium. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're good. And once the two halves are locked in place using the clip, you simply slide the plastic insert further inside the extrusion to close the gap and hold the two joints together. And inserted inside of this is the actual four-stay wire itself, giving it the strength. Yeah. Got no markers yet. Past marker. Possibly you didn't see it. Probably about five mil that way. Okay. All right. Well, those are all set lengths, so we can't really go wrong now because they're all factory produced. Yeah, exactly. Markers kind of in the middle. Didn't think of that. Was see there. See there. Now these aluminium extrusions are all the same length except for two sections, the top and the bottom. The top one you are cutting to make it the correct length to your forestay, the bottom one is where the sail slides into the luff groove. So the whole extrusions are too long by the length of the feeder. I think. Okay, I agree with you. Now Seldon, in their infinite wisdom, do give you the measurements. So if you have your existing forestay, you can do some calculations that will give you the correct length to cut all of these sections. And the one mistake that I made was not taking into account the sail slide. And we had cut the extrusions a little too long. Fortunately, in my favour. Should we test it? So I'm going to ten minutes to slot it together. Yeah. 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 It doesn't matter, I mean, it's the same. It's just in there rather than on there. And at this point, the camera decided to eat the memory card. Unfortunately, I have lost every piece of filming after this point. So you don't get to see the 
finished article being hoisted up the rig, me being up the top of the mast, attaching the cotter pins, or tensioning the force day. So with the force day in place, it's time to concentrate on something else. Hmm, that floor. And as attractive as it looks, those squeaks are going to drive me crazy. So that is something I need to address. So let's take a look at how we can address this squeaking and clunking noise from the new floor panels. The frame panels. that supports the floor is bent. So every time I walk on the floor panel, it goes kadunk kadunk, and it's driving me crazy. So now that's going to be fixed. So now I have to fix that. Hmm. And I'm thinking maybe my lifting billy I used to use for lifting the dinghy is going to do the job. And we'll see. So the problem, I'll show you this cunningly. This frame and this frame was replaced when the engine was put in and there is a gap here and an even bigger gap here. I can put my finger in. So this is bent down like this. So whenever you walk on this floor panel, it's kadang, 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 drives me crazy. I have to fix it, so that's my plan for now. So I'm gonna try and use a small block and tackle to uh, bend this frame back. I think it's strong enough. We'll see. I leave one floor panel in and then I can uh, get one, one floor panel will tell me if it's straight, if that makes sense. And as brutal as this may look, I need to take this beyond the flat position so that when it flexes back down, it is actually straight. Trust me, what could possibly go wrong? Yes. Yes, it is. There is a gap? Yeah. Maybe a half millimeter. No, a centimeter. Yes. Yeah. Okay, can we go again? Yeah, that's much closer. Still maybe a little, but I'll take if I do this one and maybe I'll come back to this one again. I think these frames got stood on when the engine was being installed. Like people were walking across it with no floor. So it's a pinpoint load. If you take something that's straight and you stand on it, it's fixed at the end. Mm. It will bend in the middle. Mm. If you spread the load across a floor panel, it doesn't bend. So I think that's what happened. People were walking on this when the engine was going in. So. We can cure the problem. Hugh's done, we got the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't watching this, I was watching that, and then now I have a jam. It doesn't want to come out. So. That's a cheat. This line is too thin. 
the line is too thin for these uh, winches. <clears throat> I was watching. And it went down the gap between the line strip and the winch. So I'm gonna have to pull it out. And watch this. Now we have a riding tool. Should have been looking, eh? Should have been looking. It's action. Everything is action. <laughs> Never rush to do a job. <laughs> when you rush a job, you just make mistakes. Oh, I have more mistakes than I need. And still, I don't fix the original problem. Fortunately, the cockpit has plenty of wind, so I can take the loose end to a different wind, pull from a different angle, and get rid of that stupid riding turn. Back to the floor. to be enough, right? But that just looks crazy now. Hopefully, but we did the same with the other one. Is the tension off? Yeah, I'll try it. That looks perfect. Yeah. It's like maybe, maybe, maybe a millimeter. Oh, a millimeter I can live with. Yeah. Yeah, it's still a little bit, eh? Not as bad as it was, but mm. I lifted that like so far. You would mm. think it would be, yeah. you would think it would be a better, and it was yeah. okay. It's good, success. You have your vent facing away from the ocean because as you hit the waves, the spray goes up. So if you have your vent facing this way, yeah. the water goes in. It's better for ventilation to have it that way. Mm but water can get in, so it's supposed to be that way. You can get some that swivel, but these don't. So <coughs> water doesn't get in, but if water does go in, there is inside of here a piece of wood that yes. comes up vertically. So the water goes in here, and there's a drain hole yes. on both sides. So then the water runs out. This separate compartment here has another piece like this that lifts up, so yes. if water does go past yes. the baffle, it doesn't yes. go down that hole into the vent. Yes. So that's what the door aid boxes do. Mine was connected directly. Yeah. That's a bad design. Yeah. It, there are differences, but that's that's what the door aid oh, boxes is doing. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Smart design. Yeah. I didn't design it. I just keep varnishing it. <laughs> so when your friends say, "Is there anything else we can do to help?" Hell yeah, it's a boat. There's so much to do. Look all this varnishing. Enjoy sanding. <laughs> Uh, 
looking nice, va? Mm. And a big shout out to Neil and Monica for helping me with this video and also with the repairs on board Blown Away. Very much appreciated. If anyone else out there would like to join to varnish or fix things, then you are more than welcome as well. And a big shout out to our monthly Kofi supporters, the McKenna family, David Luchford and Captain Svetlana. Thank you very much for your support. Nothing to hold me back. And to the massively attractive people on this list, thank you so much for helping an old coffee addict. And to our Patreon supporters, Matt, Michael, Ian, Miles, Timmy, JG, Graham LV and Jim Brecken, thank you for standing the test of time. If your t-shirts have arrived, please send me a picture of you wearing them. If they haven't, please let me know and I will chase up the post office. Thank you for watching everybody and don't forget to like, subscribe, send me a comment and share this video with your friends. See you next week. And if you'd like to join us on Patreon as a support of these videos, the link is in the comments down below.